Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, brothers and sisters from around the world, to another one of our live episodes of Gems of the Heart. And I'm your host for the program, Junaid Da. Dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again for uniting our hearts and giving us this beautiful opportunity to speak about His beautiful names and His attributes. Furthermore, I'd also like to make mention of the blessed name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, as the title suggests, Gems of the Heart, we are running a series here talking about matters that are pertaining to our hearts, talking about issues in particularly, talking about issues connected to Aqidah, those issues that are linking our hearts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from a theological discussion, not a philosophical discussion, but a discussion, inshallah ta'ala, that will really extract out the fruits of Tawheed and Aqidah and inshallah ta'ala we will see the connection will become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making this discussion a practical uh, discussion so far in our program we've discussed the various branches of Tawheed and in our discussion today we are still inside Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat which is the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last week we discussed the name Al-Wadud and today we have a very beautiful name hence the word beautiful and that is Al-Jamil the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so dear brothers and sisters let's begin by introducing the Sheikh and then we can go into our discussion and look at this particular name where does it come from what does it mean and how can we use it in a practical relevance to make our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stronger so let's begin if I can begin uh, Sheikh by introducing uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane with us here who is answering our questions on gems of the heart Sheikh I'd like to begin by saying assalamu alaikum wa alaikum uh, Sheikh, we've got this beautiful series here, Gems of the Heart. We're talking about the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, if I can start by asking you to give us a definition, I use the word beautiful, uh, but what does Al Jameel actually mean? The word Al Jameel means the most beautiful, the one that has the perfect adornment and beauty and brightness. And the word Jamil has all these types of meanings together. Okay. And uh, this is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And since we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of him. And we all understand what beautiful means, what Jamil means. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of him. Okay. So whatever people think of what beautiful means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is more beautiful beyond any, anybody's imagination. All human beings, if they get together and imagine to the most where they can think of how the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond that. Okay. In his being, in his names and attributes, in his actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Uh, Shaykh, so far the names that we've taken in our discussion of Asma Sifat have been all extracted from the Quran. But this particular name, al Jamil, it doesn't come from the Quran. So can you tell us why is that the case and where does it come from? Now, uh, this is a good example to show that uh, the deen of Islam is not just to be taken from the Qur'an. Okay. Because we have two forms of revelation from Allah, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Both are in the same status when it comes to the fact that the revelation wahi from Allah. Of course, the Qur'an is, is the miraculous words of Allah, nothing is the like of that. But when it comes to the obedience and the submission and to learning, and to get to know our religion, there is the Quran and there is the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the way of the Prophet ﷺ. So the name Al Jamil came in the Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and particularly in the Hadith in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned it clearly. A part of a Hadith he said, "Inna Allah Jamilun yuhibbu al Jamal," right. that indeed Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Jamil. So the name was mentioned. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is Jamil, and uh, this is uh, the proof that he means he is the most beautiful. Yuhibbu al Jamal. He loves beauty okay and there's implications of course and meanings to that of course okay excellent uh, sheikh also inside of that same hadith uh, uh, there is an extension to it but uh, there's also a mention of the opposite or well, not directly opposite but the word al kibar which is a uh, thing showing off or boasting uh, why is that mentioned in the same narration now the hadith actually started where the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said okay none would enter the jannah paradise if he has the weight of a mustard seed of kibr, arrogance. So a man asked the Prophet ﷺ to clarify the matter, something very minute, small amount of arrogance would deprive the person from entering Jannah. So a man asked the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya Rasulullah, rajul yuhibbu an yakuna na'aluhu hasan wa thiyabu hasana. That means a person would love to have his clothing are good, looks good, and his shoes looks good. 
is that part of kibr? Is that arrogance? So the Prophet ﷺ replied by that statement, Inna Allah jamilun yuhibbul jamal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed is the most beautiful and he loves beauty. And then the Prophet ﷺ defined al-kibr or arrogance for him. He said al-kibr ghamtu al-nas wa batal al-haq wa ghamtu al-nas which means to reject the truth and to put down people, to belittle people. Okay. This is the definition of uh, arrogance and looking nice, having a nice shoes or nice uh, garment, that does not contradict the fact that you can be still humble and it does not mean that you're arrogant because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves beauty with all what it means. Okay, excellent. Uh, Shaykh, in the same hadith you just mentioned, uh, we see the word Jamil being used, in Allah Jamil, uh, yuhibbul Jamal. So what is the difference between Jamil and Jamal from a linguistic perspective? Now, Jamil is basically uh, what is uh, beautiful, and this is related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is the one that has the most beauty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of him, and he is the most beautiful. But Jamal is the pronoun that means the, the beauty itself. Okay. He loves beauty with all what it means. Again, because beauty is not just one thing or the other, because sometimes people think of beauty as physical beauty. They're physical beauty if things are not physical. And the, the meaning of beauty that can be in every aspect of our life, whether it's in the human beings or in the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the creation of Allah, uh, in, in every single thing in this life, people need to witness the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Okay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most beautiful. All right, excellent. Uh, Shaykh, I also get the impression that from the hadith where we mentioned Jamal and we also, then we talk about kibbutz, it's, it's almost like it's implying that uh, one can look beautiful, look clean, look presentable, but it's not the same as kibbutz. Is there a very thin line between the two? Uh, al kibr or arrogance is something in the heart. Okay. So a person might look like he looks uh, nice or wearing nice garment, of course, with the conditions that it's not transgressing the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not committing sins, wearing what is permissible, not showing the awrah or what needs to be covered or not shaping the body or whatever, uh, but it's something nice. And the same thing with one's shoes and so on. That person can have arrogance in his heart as a result of what he's wearing, or he can be humble in his heart. Okay. So it's only something in the heart and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the heart. A person might wear very old and you know, uh, not nice clothes, and he has so much arrogance in his heart. Oh no. So the place of arrogance, uh, the seed of it, and the place of it is in the heart. Okay. So, uh, Sheikh, when we look into the name of uh, Jamal, uh, Jamil itself uh, with Allah, we have so many different interpretations of what it means. One of the interpretations we find is that Allah is the pinnacle of all beauty. There is nothing more beautiful than Allah himself. How do we understand that? The creator of all beauty is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever beautiful is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created that. Okay. So you can, nobody can ever imagine the attribute itself of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is Jameel, that he's the most beautiful. And in the day of judgment when the believers, they enter Jannah, and when we hear about Jannah, that in it no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no hearts have imagined of the beauty and the desires and everything is fulfilled into the ultimate desires that people have without diminishing any of the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of that together is nothing compared to the joy that the believers will get when they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the most beautiful. Okay. So the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment and in Jannah. And this is mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is the most joyful thing for them in Jannah. Okay. And is nothing compared to that joy for them. Right. And that's what the believers they seek. And this is even part of our dua. The Prophet ﷺ used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he get to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. Okay. So uh, this is to prove that how the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody can comprehend, nobody can uh, really imagine how it is. And that's why it's the most joyful thing ever okay. for people to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most beautiful. All right, today viewers like to remind you of our telephone numbers. They are there running across your screen. So please do call us, give us your questions, your comments, your queries on this subject. What would you like to add to the topic of beauty? Would you have, do you have any particular questions regarding that? Also, don't forget our question from last week is still open. We're going to leave that till the end of the program. And the question was, what are the two definitions of the word al-wudud. What do they mean when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-wudud? We mentioned two uh, reasons there or two definitions. Please do call us, give us uh, your answers on that question. We've got a number of people who contact us on Facebook. We will talk about those as well in due course. But the phone lines are open and please do join us on the program. 
Uh, Sheikh, if we can look at this name now, in, and uh, you mentioned it's uh, one of the blessings is that the, the believers will see Allah in paradise. The question I have now is that will every believer in paradise see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or is it just a special few? The evidence shows that all the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment, and they would see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. And there is a hadith which shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be seen by the believers every Friday. The way they used to gather in Jumu'ah for the Jumu'ah prayer, they will be also gathered in Jannah, uh, all the people, all the believers in Jannah, and they will sit according to their ranks in Jannah. And nobody will see himself that he's inferior or less uh, than others. Everybody will see themselves as the most uh, rewarded one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to them from above. Okay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to each and every one of them. And he would remind them of his favor, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and even remind them of their sins and their mistakes in this life, in which that would increase their joy even, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them in Jannah. And all of these sins have been forgiven. So, uh, and they would see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they would speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the hadith mentioned, that they would go back to their families in Jannah, much, much more be beautiful than the way they went. Okay. So their beauty keep on increasing an everlasting increase in Jannah every time they go see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He's the most beautiful subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, excellent. Uh, also, Shaykh, an uh, uh, interesting uh, story we find with Musa alayhi salam when he asked to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but uh, the beauty of Allah, as we said, nobody has seen. So what happened with Musa alayhi salam when he requested to see Allah? Now, this is mentioned in Surah Al-Araf where Musa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam, لَن تَرَنِي وَلَكِنْ انظر إِلَى الْجَبَلِ فَإِنْ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَنِي uh, you won't be able to see me, that means in this life. No one is allowed to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. But he uh, said to Musa alayhi salam, look to the mountain, uh, then you will be, you'll be able to see me, you'll see me. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّاءَ وَخَرَّ مُوسَى صَعِيقَ okay. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tajalla, the word tajalla means, uh, it's very difficult to translate. I'm not sure exactly what's the exact word for tajalla. That means he was about to, to be revealed to the mountain, the mountain get destroyed. Okay. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not seen by Musa alayhi salam, just about to be, then that caused the mountain to be destroyed and Musa alayhi salam fainted, you know, because of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beauty of Allah, the, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, uh, that the hijab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a nur, as the Prophet said, light. Uh, that if this is lifted, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's light will burn anything that uh, the end of the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reach. So human beings, they cannot sustain that in this life. Okay. But in Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the ability to see the most beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. Also, Shaykh, I want to talk about uh, the miraculous night journey of the Prophet al-Isra al-Miraj. Uh, did the Prophet see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this journey? Uh, this is one of the maybe counted uh, points of aqidah, matters of belief, because it's unseen that there is differences or a valid differences of opinions among okay. the ulama because it's also a differences of opinions among the sahaba, the companions of uh, Some used to believe that the Prophet وسلم, saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the night of al-Isra and Miraj and others uh, used to believe that he didn't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so both are valid but there is the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when he was asked وسلم, did you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said nurun anna ara Okay. Which means I saw light and Allah, how can I see him? That means he did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He saw the light and the Prophet ﷺ, he reached a position, a place where no human being whatsoever reached that status whatsoever. Not, no of, none of the Prophets of Allah reached that place. The closest place uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ reached there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the Prophet sallallahu but as the correct opinion, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, that the Prophet sallallahu didn't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that journey. Okay, excellent. Uh, Shaykh, another interpretation the scholars give us of the meaning uh, al-jameel is the fact that every name and every attribute of Allah is very beautiful. How do we understand that? Uh, since the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are perfect names, and His attributes are beautiful names and complete and perfect names, so every name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we think about it, it reached the ultimate means of uh, beauty. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. 
when we think about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody can comprehend it and how beautiful is the mercy. The word beauty itself and okay. al-jamal itself, what does it mean to a human being? What does it feel when you see something beautiful? It gives you pleasure, you know, and gives you satisfaction and things like this. So uh, when it comes to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the effect of that in the lives of the human beings and the whole entire life is, is, is affected by the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the most beautiful thing when it comes about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wisdom of Allah, in which these things people would not even be able to comprehend. Okay. But when they get a glimpse of what these things are, uh, people will be amazed and they say, subhanAllah, how beautiful are these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call it Asma'ullah al-Husna. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His names are husna. That means they are the most perfect, the most beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, very nice. Uh, Shaykh, another interpretation we find of the word uh, al-jamil is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dealing with creation is in the most perfect and the most beautiful uh, dealings. How do we understand that particular? Uh, th interpretation? This is a very important aspect. Okay. A very, very important thing. And many people, they don't have this uh, knowledge of how the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the most beautiful. Okay. When we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-jamil, the most beautiful in his names and attributes, in his actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we talk about anything in the kingdom of the heavens and, of, and the earth, this is all actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing but beauty. So when it comes to even calamities, uh, things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that the human beings don't like, killings, atrocities, all of these things, how can that be related to the beautiful actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, and we talked about that before that when, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed, it's either by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His knowledge and wisdom or by the justice of Allah. And the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also very beautiful. Okay. And that's why when things happen that the human beings don't like, there are two aspects to it. There's the part where the human beings are doing, which can be evil actions and so on and so forth, and they don't like it. But when it comes from the fact that this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from that aspect, it's the most beautiful act. Okay. It cannot be more beautiful than this. So that the purpose of life is being fulfilled. Sure. So that the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who will be punished in the day of judgment will be established. People sometimes they question why disbelievers will be in the hellfire forever. But then when they see the atrocities and the evil actions of the disbelievers in this life, they would see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the time and give them the, uh, you know, the ability to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but some they don't. And they continue to be so evil that people will see, subhanAllah, how can they be left like this? Okay. So that when the punishment come unto them, then it shows the beautiful justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the believers, the levels to be elevated, for the sins to be expiated, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to choose shuhada martyrs as a result of the struggle between the truth and falsehood, all of that is from the beautiful uh, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where the believers, only the believers would always see the beautiful actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay. so uh, a beautiful thing for us to do really is that anything that happens in our life, we really need to relate it to this name Al-Jameel right. that it comes from the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most beautiful, if you get sick if you lose money, if there is death and all the types of good things all of that a person should witness the beautiful actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh. because everything is decreed by this name Al-Jameel, the most beautiful subhanahu wa ta'ala for people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it's mentioned in some of the traditions when uh, a prophet of Allah or so asked why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test the human beings with difficulties and calamities and the answer was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hear his slaves okay. when they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they ask Allah and they make dua and they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. These are all beautiful meanings. You see how when calamities comes, and we keep on saying for people, for us to make dua, and for people to make dua, it's a beautiful thing on the face of earth when the believers turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with this worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything is by the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His knowledge and His justice and His wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and Shaykh also looking at His actions, as you said, the most uh, beautiful of actions, can we also encompass that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overlooks so many people's mistakes and so many sins that take place on a daily basis, on every second, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overlooks that and He forgives the people. Right, and that's why in every name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can see the beauty in it. Like for example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sitir, okay. that he covers the faults of people. That he is al-ghafoor, that the, the faults are covered, 
they don't get punished uh, for their sins in this life and he's the one that forgives in the day of judgment uh, the maghfira or for the human beings to forgive they can forgive but their forgiveness sometimes has some issues with it but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need of his creation and he forgives a beautiful forgiveness and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran and ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to deal with the disbelievers in Mecca those who were harming the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them while he was in Mecca فصفح الصفح الجميل pardon the beautiful pardoning okay pardoning that is beautiful how can pardoning be beautiful as the ulama they say pardoning or forgiveness that has no complaints afterwards has no re reminding of the person of his faults you forgave someone stop reminding that person of his faults this okay. is something that we are in need of especially you see that between husbands and wife for example an issue happens and this is present in all marriages so uh, the husband or the wife say forgive me so they would forgive then another the next fight comes in then they would remind them of their all of their faults in the uh, you know from the very beginning okay you had forgiven forgive and that's it and you wipe it and you don't remind the person again this is the this is the level of a safh or pardoning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from the believers all for the sake of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al jamil so the actions will have beauty to it okay so uh, forgiveness dealing with people buying and selling there's beauty in it right it's not greed and with the penny and things like this we're ordered even when you're putting things on a balance to to sell something to give extra don't be very strict on the dot and that's why these digital balances sometimes are, are not very good okay. uh, meaning of course it's good to make sure that things are accurate but if a person is selling something it doesn't have to be 10.00 you can make it 10.10 .10 or 10.05 is the people's uh, hearts right you make it easy <laughs> with extra okay to the people something minimum something that's not going to affect the person but this is part of the beauty even in something like this in buying and selling very so nice. you can imagine everything else sure. neighbors oneself one's clothing uh, one's appearance, uh, one's uh, you know, education, learning, uh, looking into life in general, okay. uh, looking at the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, it can really be part of our life in every aspect of it. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sheikh, also we're looking at the actions of Allah, and we're saying that the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are beautiful. If we were to say that uh, the actions were fair and just based upon our actions, then surely our sins will outweigh our good deeds and we will all be destroyed but it is the beauty of Allah that he allows us to continue even though our sins are more than our good deeds and this is again as I said the forgiveness imagine that when the, in the lives of the people when someone made uh, something wrong and is brought to justice there's no uh, area of forgiveness there right you know people would just and people would love that P human beings I love justice and nobody would say the judge has been mean or anything like this I mean he's dealing with a case with the evidence of it and he gives the ruling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver and this is with beauty right that no matter how much sins a person committed if he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives right. and all of these sins are wiped and even if the sin is repeated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would repeat his forgiveness and where is that in the in, in the world that we live in and this is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's the only one that forgives and that's why it's a shame when a person will continue to commit sins without repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. It's a shameful thing. A person is not subjected to the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to forgiveness, when it comes to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with even the good deeds and staying away from bad deeds. This is all part of the, the beauty of this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings in the hearts of the believers when they're obedient to him all kinds of beauty, the tranquility, the ease of goodness, the, the ease to recite the Quran, to make the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is part of the beauty of and actually this is the real beauty of this life. Otherwise, it's it's all bad and evil. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, dunya mal'unatun mal'unu ma fiha illa dhikrullahi wa mawala. The dunya is cursed and everything in it is cursed except the remembrance of Allah and what helps the remembrance of Allah. So it shows how life without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance and worship of Allah, it's the most ugliest thing. Right. And the thing that would make the life beautiful is the deen of Allah, is the deen of Islam. Right. Is the righteousness, is the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, excellent. Uh, Shaykh, another interpretation I found that the scholars say about the word al jamil is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the beings in the most beautiful form. The suwar is in the most perfect form. How do we understand that? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings in the most perfect form 
that will fulfill the purpose of his life in this earth. Okay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمُ مُحَمَّنَّهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ That we had honored the son of Adam. And uh, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, when he perfected the shape of the human beings, uh, and, and as it's mentioned, the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala خَلَقَ اللَّهُ آدَمَ عَلَى صُورَتِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam on his image. And how that the, the, the form and the shape of the human beings is so honorable and, and good. Okay. Uh, that a person when he walks, he, we don't walk like the animals do. Sure. Uh, imagine human beings they have to crawl like this. Or when we eat, we can sit and we can lift the food to our mouth in a very honored and a dignified way. We don't pick the ground when, we come, when it comes to eating. Uh, how every part of our body is in the perfect position for human beings to be honored and to be dignified. And this is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We did not earn it. We did not put places or parts in its places. Everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The proportions between the hands and the legs and how the two hands are equal and the five fingers and the toes. And it's amazing creation of Allah, the face itself where it's honored. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from anyone to hit the face because it's honored. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in the most perfect way to fulfill the, 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 the purpose of our life and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with every single organ of our body to feel and to see the beauty of it with the worship of Allah. And so could this be one of the direct reasons to why the ideology or the mindset of the Muslim is very different to the mindset of those who are believing in evolution or those who are believing in the fact that we come from monkeys. Uh, they don't really have any kind of respect for the human body. They just say it's just here by chance. Whereas the Muslim will say, no, every single part of the human being is sacred and is honorable. Right, and that's again because if we relate it to the subject of beauty, people do not really value what beauty is. Uh, it's the same thing when people just get indulged so much into materialistic things. They don't see the real essence of things. And who said that happiness is materialistic? Happiness is something within oneself. And everybody will agree to this. So the same thing, beauty is not something that physical only. Okay. This is part of beauty. But there is beauty that comes within oneself. Okay. So when a person always uh, just uh, get into the trap of materialistic uh, actions and, and, and things and, and people think that this is, that's it and for them to indulge themselves into their desires without looking at the beauty of it, they waste so much of their life and without the light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything really, and this is, if we can have this in our life, our life will have a meaning to it. That we would see everything as ugly really. Okay. Unless it is blessed by the, the redeen of Islam and the righteousness. Because you see always things by, its, by the end of it. The end result. Sure. If, if something would lead to the hellfire, how ugly is the hellfire? Sure. So everything that leads to the hellfire has to be very ugly. Even if it looks to the people by deception that this is beautiful, it's not beautiful. The, the dunya, this life that we live in, you know, and how it's going to be, or death is going to be slotted between the hellfire and the jannah, and how the dunya looks ugly. As some uh, texts would mention this, the dunya that took away people from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's something that people might be attracted to it so much, but in reality when they come closer to it, when the hijab of it is lifted, they would see how ugly it is uh, this uh, world that we live in if it's not with the, the, the beauty of the deen of Islam and the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, excellent, Sheikh. We've come to the end of our first part of the program. Let's take a short break and then when we come back, we'll continue with our discussion. Dear viewers, we're going to take a short break here and hopefully when we come back, we'd like to hear your answers to the question from last week. What are the two meanings of the beautiful name of Allah, Al-Wadud? Furthermore, if you would like to add anything to the program, you'd like to give us some of your contributions, feel free to do that after the break. And also, I'll be reading out your names and your comments that you've given to us on the question on Facebook. Let's take a short break and we will see you all in a few moments. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome brothers and sisters joining us on segment number two on our beautiful program Gems of the Heart where we are looking at the name Al Jamil which is loosely translated as the most beautiful and we've discussed it with relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we made mention of four different possible understandings of the word Al Jamil. All of them are correct but now let's move forward and look at how possibly this word can be uh, put in action with regards to the believers and also the brothers and sisters 
audience would like for you to answer our question from last week. What is the meaning of Al-Wudud? Do pick up your phones and do join us here in the studio. We will come to uh, your comments on Facebook towards the end of the program. And we will also be giving you a new question for this week towards the end of the program as well. Uh, Sheikh, if we can now move on. We looked at how the word Al-Jameel is relevant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his actions. But I want to now look at how that can be put into action with the believers. Uh, we know in, in a very famous verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers to take their zina, to take their goodness when they enter upon the masajid. What does that mean? Uh, as it's mentioned before when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything that has from the human perspective where a human being can have some of these attributes from being a human being with all the deficiencies that we have, then it's part of the belief in these names and attributes of Allah to have that effect in our life. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most beautiful, and since the hadith says he loves beauty, that means it's part of our deen is to uh, implement this beauty in our life. And as we said, physically and non-physically. When it comes to physical aspects of it, uh, it's, it's part of the deen of Islam for a person to clean himself. Okay. Half of faith is basically based on tahara or purification. So whether it's uh, physically purifying oneself, making sure that there's no uh, bad smell, Human beings, if they don't clean themselves, you know, there they can be very not pleasant smell that comes from them. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the part of our religion is to clean ourselves and to protect others from being harmed, from smelling something bad, from seeing something bad. Uh, and as you mentioned, the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us for people to take the zina or the beauty when they go to the masjid of Allah, to the house of Allah. So to wear the nice clothes, to, to respect the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their cleanliness and... But this nice clothes and nice appearance is not the ways of the disbelievers. Sure. It's not the ways of the disbelievers where a person would have arrogance or would try to uh, commit sins as a result of this by attracting uh, men, attracting women, or women attracting men. This is not permissible whatsoever. Uh, but to look nice to one another, uh, to wear the proper clothing uh, that covers one's aura and so on, because a person would say, well, then uh, women, they need to look beautiful when they go out and when they go to the masjid. Uh, the women they need to be beautiful to their husbands and to be that like that in their homes but once they go out this is exclusive to their maharim okay to those who are uh, relatives to them to their husbands and it's not for anyone else because this is where we can really see the differences sure uh, a person might say and shaitan might whisper to someone why should we prevent people from really seeing the beauty of of women for example okay you know uh, this is uh, then it would lead to so much evil yeah, this beauty of the women, this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the halal way to it, is for people to get married. And otherwise it's not beautiful, actually it's ugliness. Sure. When people would disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it would lead them to uh, sins and major sins and so on. So what is beauty in our life and our appearance is according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sure, sure. And people should not think that if I'm righteous, if I'm religious, that means I have to look bad. I have okay. to look not clean. I have to look with not with nice clothes. This is actually against the way the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ used to wear uh, white, and he said, "Ilbisul abiyad," like wear white, because this is uh, for when people think of white uh, garments, it's something very difficult to keep it clean. Right. And you would find yourself constantly cleaning yourself. Uh, dark clothes sometimes it stays for a long time. You don't have to wash it because it doesn't show the dirt on it. So it shows how the Prophet ﷺ was uh, spotless clean at all times. It was mentioned the same thing with the imma of the Deen. Imam Ahmad and others, they used to be known by this. They were so clean. They would wear the white and it's so clean and it, it stays clean. And when it becomes dirty, of course, they wash it and so on. And this is not luxurious life. Cleanliness, and cleanliness is one thing. Luxurious life is something else. Okay. So to be clean, to wear something nice and decent and according to the rules of the Sharia, of course, this is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Okay, Sheikh, I would like to just address one uh, misconception which you brought up in the discussion there, that uh, in the place, in, this, in the privacy of the home of a husband and a wife, the wife, she can wear whatever she likes to please her husband. And this is considered to beauty, and it's considered to be permissible under Islam. Is that right? Of course. And this is what, again, people, when they do that in the haram way, and people have, they went so far into beautifying themselves and so on, this is, all of this can be done uh, between the husband and the wife. And okay. the real joy that a person is seeking can be done ultimately in the marriage life. Okay. That's why, and, and this is without exaggeration, that a true Muslim, 
he is the most joyful when it comes to the relationship between him and his and his wife more than anyone else that is enjoying the haram relationships between men and women okay because when a person becomes exclusively fulfilling his desire in the halal way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless it okay and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them enjoy what is halal uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they get rewards for it but again shaitan whispers for the people to seek uh, be- beauty or beautiful things in a haram way it is always brings uh, bad things in this life and in the hereafter okay. so beautifying oneself between the husband and the wife uh, many people they think if you're at home you have to look uh, not good who said that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma he used to say one time uh, someone saw him with nice garment he said, I like to beautify myself to my wife the same way I like my wife to beautify herself uh, for me. Okay. So um, sometimes men, they think it's only the wife that has to beautify herself for the husband. No, the, the man also should do that to his wife. Sure. And uh, how people, when they go out to their homes, they make sure that they look nice and everything like this, especially if they have a meeting or, or something important that they do. Uh, and once they go home, they, you know, they don't care about this. <laughs> to the closest people to them. One okay. of the Prophet ﷺ said, خيركم, خيركم لأهلي, خيركم لأهلي. The best among you are the best to his family, and I'm the best to your family. So your family have more rights on you to look nice in front of them than those who are outside. Sure. So we kind of flipped the matter, made it the opposite. And this is a problem. Okay. And that's also for those women, those who do not wear hijab, they should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wear the hijab to make their beauty exclusive to the husbands and they beautify themselves at home and once they go out the people they, they there is no business for them whatsoever to see their beauty okay excellent Sheikh. i also want to touch on the topic you mentioned tahara um we're looking at the bigger tahara which is the shower and the ghusl um talking about that how often should a muslim keep himself clean and the the friday ghusl as well how important is it that a muslim is constantly taking a shower and cleaning himself now when it comes to sh- showering there's a mandatory one uh, which is the shower of geneva when a person has uh, relations with his wife or whatever necessitates the mandatory shower, this is, has to be done, even if it's every day. But also the, the Jumu'ah, uh, the Friday shower for those who go to the masjid, it is very stressed sunnah, and some said it's an obligation, but the majority say that it's a very stressed sunnah for those who go to the masjid. Uh, so this is a weekly shower, and that's why there's some text that gives this meaning. That is basically a week is the max Okay. Where a person can stay without taking a shower, right? You know, and that means that, and of course, if before the week a person smells or he's been sweaty or whatever, then he has to clean himself so that no one is harmed. Sure. You know, a person uh, when you sit next to someone on the, in a bus or in the subway or in the masjid, that person right next to you, he has rights on you. Okay. And that's where the meaning of the verse was sahibu bil jamb that as, as some of the translation of the, the neighbors and those who are close to you. Anyone that is close to you, he has a right that he is not harmed by you, whether okay. it's a smell or a word or harm, physical harm, whatever there is. So that at the least is the smell. Okay. And to extend your benefit to them by generosity, by goodness, by for them to feel safe, uh, by not harming them and also to have a nice smell. Okay. You know, so this is part of the deen is to make sure that we are conscious of those who are around us so that they only smell and they see only what is good sure. and they don't see and they don't smell anything that is uh, not or less than goodness. Okay, Sheikh, also the Prophet mentioned five acts of the fitrah uh, which would contribute to the beauty of a Muslim. Uh, unfortunately, I find many people t- these days they have misunderstood this or haven't understood it at all. How can we explain that? Now, uh, these khasal uh, fitra or the matters of fitra, something that is not just unique to this religion of Islam, but it's also from the prophets before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created people in such a way that they used to, they should do these things to be clean and it's part of the religion and it should, some of them is mandatory to be done. Okay. One of which is, uh, for example, the, the beard for men. And this is mandatory for men to have beards as the Prophet ﷺ ordered. And this is the beauty for men in this life. Okay. But when the fitrah, when the nature become distorted and people get used to something, then they might would see that, no, the beauty is when a person shaves his beard. Okay. No, this is distortion to the fitrah. 
Uh, and that's why in the past, whenever they used to punish someone and they would shave his beard and walk, take him in the market, then people would laugh at him because as if someone is being mutilated, basically. Okay. So uh, this is according, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created men with beards and they should keep their beards. And this is how beautiful means of beauty and, and strength and so on. And also with regards to circumcision of, of men, which is part of Khazal Fitra, to shave uh, the, the pubic hair, uh, to take the hair from under the arm hair, and to uh, trim the mustache, as the Prophet ﷺ said. Uh, all of these things are to be done and to, and to trim the, the, the nails, uh, both hands and, and the toes. And this is something to be done periodically, every week or some years, as Anas said, the most is 40 days. You cannot go beyond that. Okay. Uh, so this is something that a Muslim take care of his body. Uh, and some people, they, for example, they leave the hair of their, under their arms uh, and they think that this is part of, of manhood. Okay. You know, this is ugliness. This is dirtiness. Right? Okay. Uh, a Muslim, the cleanliness is to take that away. And it's sure. not just for women. It's for both women and men. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sheikh, also we mentioned that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions are beautiful. Uh, and uh, we want to now look at that from the human side. How can we beautify our actions? Can I make one possible suggestion is the fact of the adhkar. So whenever we do an action, we know the Prophet sallallahu has told us either to say bismillah or there is a certain mention that we should have. Now, as we said, the physical aspects of beauty, this is very easy to understand according to the rules of sure. the deen, of course. But the thing is that so many things that are not physical, that we need to do to beautify our life and to beautify our actions. Okay. Uh, one of which is, as you said, to, to be religious, to be a Muslim. And when a person follows the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, he, he becomes very beautiful in his actions, in his dealings, in his speech, because he's following the most beautiful of all mankind, and that is Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Okay. And he had the most beautiful uh, physical appearance and actions and speech, and we are ordered to follow him in every single aspect of our life. And this is how to beautify our actions. So when we say Bismillah before we do anything, we're blessing this action, we're beautifying it actually, to make it really done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the purpose of our life. And then to do it in the most perfect way, uh, to the extent of which even uh, when a person slaughters an animal to eat. Okay. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that, that, that if you kill an animal, then make it with ihsan, make it with goodness. When we slaughter an animal, right, uh, you see the, the, the butchers were, you know, slaughterhouses where people, they don't care. They slaughtered the animals all together in the same time. They don't care about the, 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 the feelings of the animal. Allah okay. subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the permission to eat the meat, but to do it with beauty, to take it away from, the, from other animals so that it doesn't see the blood of other animals being, being shed, uh, to feed the animal before you slaughter it. Right to uh, say Bismillah, which is the right of the animal to say Bismillah on it Shabbat. and to slaughter it in the right way because the creator of this animal, he's the one that gave us the permission and he knows best what's best for it. It's been created for that reason. So it's not according to our definition. Those who are vegetarians, for example, would, they would you know, say that it's not permissible to eat these animals, their souls and so on. The one that created them, he's the one that created them for that purpose. So they're not in, in miseries or anything of that nature. It's all but, but with the condition that it's done by the orders of Allah, by the name of Allah in the proper way. Okay. So this is also part of beauty. So you can imagine if it's in these cases, there's nothing then in our life unless if we follow the way the Prophet ﷺ, and that's a long journey of knowledge that we need to seek, you would find our actions are the most beautiful. Okay. All right, excellent. Uh, Sheikh, on that note, if we can look at some of the answers that we had from our question from last week, and then we can continue with our discussion. Uh, we've got a number of different responses on our Facebook page. We have our first response to the question, what are the two meanings of the word al-wudud? We have with us brother Usman uh, al-Shafa, and he says, Assalamu alaikum, the two meanings of the name al-wudud are number one, the loving, and number two, the affectionate. True. Is that correct? It's correct. We can say it's correct. Inshallah. Okay, so the Sheikh says, Brother Usman, your answer is correct. And then we have a second response coming from Sister Mary Oli, mashallah. And she says, Assalamu alaikum. The two meanings of Al Wadud are the most loving and the most affectionate. Again. Yeah, okay, Sister Mary as well. Well done. Congratulations. And we have a third response coming from Sister Aisha uh, Nuruddin. And she says, Al Wadud is the one who is the source of all love and affection. His love is intense, constant, and lasting, and the one who is deserving of all love and affection, Al-Wudud, uh, loves the believers, and the believers love him more than anything else. Masha'Allah, it's more perfect even. 
more yeah. comprehensive. Yeah, more comprehensive. Yes. Okay, so Sister Aisha, well done, mashallah, comprehensive answer. And we have Brother Latif Amo, and he says Al Wudud, which comes from uh, Al Wud, means the one who loves his servants and shows that love through his favors on his servants in both worlds. And uh, the second meaning of Al Wudud is the one who is loved the most and is also the Mufa'ul, the object aspect, exalting, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's very, very good. Okay, so well done, Brother Latif, as well. The Shaykh is saying uh, both yourself and brother uh, Sister Aisha, your answers are comprehensive. And answers from Sister Mary and Sister Usman also correct as well. So well done, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase all four of you in your knowledge and keep you active with the channel uh, as well. I'll give you the question for this week in just a moment. Before we do that, Shaykh, I want to ask one final question before we conclude. And that is a famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where the Prophet Sallallahu said that he loved three things uh, mm -hmm. of this dun dunya. Very briefly, what were those three things? Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Hubbi ilayim dunyakum. It was made beloved to me in, from your dunya, from this your world. And nisa wa tib, women and a tib, uh, perfume or nice smell. Wa ju'alat qurratu aini fi salah. And the comfort and the jewel of my eyes has been made in salah. So uh, these three things, uh, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two of them he made it than the human beings and whoever deny this he is not really a, a strong individual okay that's why when we say the Prophet sallam, he's been Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected him in all aspects physically and non physically righteousness and all kinds of things so for a man to uh, to like uh, women in the proper way through marriage this is a, a sign of strength of the man Okay. Something that the world is trying to change now, right? Uh, something that people might think in other faiths and so on that this is takes away from the righteousness of the men. No, this is not true. If it's done in the proper way with the, with the channels of marriage and so on, this is a sign of strength. This is a good thing for the person to do so. And good smell, perfume. Okay. And the Prophet Sallam would do that and he ordered the believers to do so. So it's it's not waste of money when a person would choose a nice smell. Uh, to put on but uh, outside of the home it is only permissible for men for women again their beauty is exclusive to the husbands okay uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to all obey the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is something beloved to the Prophet sallam. and then he said the comfort of my eyes is in the salah okay excellent Sheikh we have come to the end of the program and uh, could I take your permission for giving the viewers the question for this week so Okay, thank you very much. Uh, dear viewers, the question for this week is about uh, the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating uh, human beings in the best form. So the question is, in which surah in the Quran did Allah make mention of the fact that the humans are created in the best form? Form. The question will be put up on Facebook. You can see it there on your screens as well. In which surah and verse number, don't forget, uh, was this particular ayah mentioned. Now, on that note, inshallah ta'ala, dear brothers and sisters, we'd like to conclude. I'd like to turn to our Sheikh first and foremost and thank you for coming to the program, Sheikh, and mm -hmm. sharing others with your time and knowledge. And uh, I'd like to conclude by saying assalamu alaikum. alaikum Dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to also conclude and thank all of you for tuning in. What a beautiful session we've had talking about the name Al Jamil. And there are so many different ways in which we can put this name into action. We can beautify our own actions, as we said, physically, making ourselves clean. And the actions were mentioned very clearly. Spiritually as well, by making mention of Allah, saying Bismillah prior to any action. Also, learning the adhkar particular to that action you're going to do. For example, entering the bathroom, being with your wife, so and so forth. There's so many different adhkar uh, that you can do. So Dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to conclude. Thank all of you for tuning in, and we will see you next week on our program, Gems of the Heart. So until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa